Hey there, performance management students. Don't worry, there is no banjo playing in this video. If you're looking to get a pass on your upcoming exam, in this video, I'm sharing with you my top tips for paper PM. Without further ado, let's get rocking. Brilliant performance management students. Get out a pen, get a pad of paper ready. Here are my top tips to help you get a pass on your upcoming exam. First tip, ensure you know how to manage your time in this exam. Yes, you heard that before. I've been talking about that on my webinars for years. It's a common cause of PM failure, especially when I see people who had a 48 if they had managed their time just a little better, they would have been able to get one more Section A question and a borderline pass. But what does that mean precisely in your PM exam? Let me show you. We're going to start in Section A. We're going to work on a principle of 1.7 minutes per mark. You probably heard 1.8. I like 1.7 to give you a bit of buffer time to navigate through the screens and to give you a little bit of time at the end. Start in section A, give yourself 50 minutes in section A. Get through all of them. Try the easier questions first. Those would be the shorter theory questions. Come back to the more difficult ones after you've passed through all 15. You're not going to finish the whole set of 15 questions in 50 minutes, but that is fine. If you can get 11 or so done in that first 50 minutes, you're doing fine. After you finish section B, skip over B, and then you're going to go right to the constructed response questions. You'll give yourself 34 minutes per question. Be brutal with your time management. When you get into section C, you're going to see the individual requirements. Look at this. We see one for four marks, one for two marks, one for five marks. When you're doing these, I recommend you back the time management rule down even further. I say 1.5 minutes for this part because you need to then read, you got to read that scenario. That's going to take some time. You've got to plan, think about your answer. So for A1, it's four marks. Give yourself six minutes there. When 34 minutes has elapsed, move on to the second section C. When you are done with section C, you'll go to the most difficult part of the exam, section B, where you will find the three short scenarios. Each short scenario has five questions attached to it. Give yourself 17 minutes per Section B scenario. You're not going to finish all five questions. If you can get four of them done, that's fine. 17 minutes per Section B question. If you follow that approach, 50 minutes, Section A. 34 minutes per question, Section C. 17 minutes per scenario, Section B. You're going to be left now with 11 minutes of buffer time. Go back to section A. Maybe your memory is jogged from having completed sections B and C. Go back in, do your best on any of those remaining section A questions. In the last minutes of the exam, make sure you've guessed at everything. And there you have it, the exam approach, how to manage your time. Next tip, get the easy marks first. Again, that's something you've heard. That's something I've been saying for years. Let me show you what that means in each section of the exam. Let's start in section A. You start with section A in the exam, and you are going to quickly pass through all of the questions. We've got activity-based costing first. Not so bad, but it's a bit of a labor-intensive approach. There's going to be a lot of numbers there. I can do that, but I don't want to do that the first thing. I want to keep moving through. Are there any easy questions to do first? Ooh, seasonality. That one would be easy. I would grab that right away. 
I've got four quarters there. I've got to roll the quarters to the next one. I've got to then just use that linear equation, adjust for seasonality. I'll get that figure, no problem. That one, there's a lot to process there. We can do that, but let's come back to it. Oh, look, a theory question. Let's very quickly do that. So that's the first thing to do. Do a quick pass through section A, scoop up three or so easier questions. You only need eight questions correct in A to get a pass. So if you can get three of them right, right in the beginning, you're really on your way to, 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 a, to getting a pass. That brings me to my next tip. When you find a theoretical question, such as question four here, see if you can eliminate one of the distractors before you start looking for correct statements. So I look over my options here, and I can look at the second statement. Input analysis divides material flows within an organization into three categories. Flows, flows, flows. And I rely on my, my technical knowledge Flow cost accounting goes with the word flow. So I am also using key word recognition. Flows goes with flow cost accounting in environmental accounting. Input output analysis, that goes with units, physical units. Life cycle costing, that goes with the long-term consequences of our decisions. We're looking at our costs over the entire life cycle. ABC goes with overhead analysis. Well, we've eliminated the second one. So now we've just got to find two correct or eliminate one more. I like statement one. That rings a bell. That's in all of the textbooks. And I like statement four. Life cycle costing is about all stages of the product from design to shutdown. I'm not sure about three but it's okay. I like one. I like four. I've eliminated two. Go with that. I'm continuing to move through section A. I find another theoretical question on value for money. Not such a bad topic. I'm going to exploit the easy marks here. I'm going to refresh my memory before that I read, and I remember effectiveness. That's measuring does the organization reach its objectives or its mission. So you got to find the mission of this of this organization. Economy, that's about the lowest cost inputs. Efficiency, that's about the maximum output per unit of input. And there's often the word per. It's a often a compound metric, something per something. With those tips, this question is easy. So right out of the gate, I'm going to clear two of these easier questions, and hopefully there's a third one as I keep scrolling through. Then I'm going to go back and I'll do the easier numerical ones, and when 50 minutes are up, I'm going to move on to section C. Friends, if you want more tips on section A, check the link right here to my website. I've got over 70 section A debriefs happening right there. Let's talk about getting the easy marks in section C. You've cleared section A, you're getting into section C, the constructed response questions, you're gonna get a spreadsheet, you're gonna get some word processor work, roughly an even balance between the two. Know your spreadsheet exam technique, know your writing exam technique. Let's start with spreadsheet. Whatever you do here, lay out your work in a nice, structured, organized way. That way, if you make a mistake, that figure will be assumed correct everywhere else you use it. That is called the own figure rule. Markers only give that when they can follow your work. So lay out your work before you start. Look at this. I've got two templates in play, and I've got all the figures that I need to use right there on the right. Everything laid out nicely. The next thing to remember when you're sitting the exam is that you'll get diminishing returns on your time when you start with the easier things first. So in a question like this, do what you can do. If you, if you encounter something difficult, do your best at it or, or put down an assumed answer and keep the question moving. You will not be 
punished twice for one mistake. Next tip I want to share about getting easy marks is to practice working to templates. There are templates for many of these question types. If you know the template, it's just a matter of filling out the template. If there's a little tricky thing or two, do your best and you'll still be able to get most of the marks and a comfortable pass on the requirement. And I've got a lot of videos demonstrating the template approach. So right here, check the link right here. That's to my PM playlist. And in, in these days before your exam, practice these questions. Please remember the spreadsheet approach to solving a question will look different than the word processor approach that you see in the back of your, your study book. Many of those questions were, were produced in Microsoft Word, not in Excel. So don't be afraid. Don't worry if your spreadsheet approach is more efficient than a, the approach that you see in the back of the book. If you'd like to, to learn more about these spreadsheet templates, check the link right here, subscribe to my channel and my playlist for PM. I've got a whole bunch of questions there. You can practice your spreadsheet exam technique. Let's talk about easy marks in the discussion-based requirements. I observe that, that many of my students often overcalculate and underwrite. They spend too much time on the spreadsheet, not enough time on the discussion, when the discussions are, for me, easier to get the marks. Remember that one mark, when you are explaining or discussing or describing, that's an idea. Try to give the marker several short sentences, not just one sentence fragment, to develop your idea nine marks. So if you, you want to go for seven or so ideas, structure your answer before you start writing with headings and subheadings. Before you start writing, make sure you really focus on the verb. In this case, it's explain reasons why they would be interested in the plan, the price planning variance and the price operational variance. So I set up my main headings first and then I develop my ideas underneath each heading. When you're doing the writing in section C, they give you a story, don't they? So really try to link your answer to the story, reference pieces of the scenario, the industry, the products, their situation. A more difficult requirement is assessing performance, as we see right here on the screen. Here, you're going to start with a table every time. I see 14 marks. I'm going to build a table. It's going to be four columns, and it's going to be one half of 14 is seven. Add a little bit more, so I'm going to run this down to nine or 10 rows. I'm always going to use four standard column headings when I am assessing performance. Metric, working, result, discussion. After you have this template in, in place, you read the story, you understand what are they after, what problems do they have, what are they doing well, you look at, the, look at their, their data, and then you need to come up with metrics. You decide what metrics you want to use to assess the performance. If there, there's no indication about the number of marks for the workings, split that 14 in half. So you'd come up with seven metrics, whatever they would be, okay? Whatever they would be, whatever you decide on. If they gave you an indication, let's say they said five marks are for the workings, nine marks are for the discussion. Remember that one simple working for example, a ratio x over x is then equal to something. That's going to get you a half of a mark. So if they said that there were five marks for the workings, just keep that in mind. They're not going to give you extra marks if you go over 10 workings. So as you're thinking about what you want to calculate, don't go overboard and try to use if they give you a variety of information, they give you some financial, some non-financial, use data from the whole question. Don't just go down 
the, the, the P&L. In the model solutions to this type of question, you often see them analyzing every line in the P&L, every piece of data that is given. Well, you don't have time to do that in the exam. So you've got to cherry pick. You've got to go for, in this case, let's say, the 10 easiest pieces of data that you can find. When you get busy then to doing the workings, you, you often get two columns. We've got 04 and 05. So be efficient, 04, 05. Then we can put the change, copy paste that in, make a structure before you start your work. Look at this. If they're giving me a half of a mark for every simple working, I'm going to get up to, 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 to the five marks quite quickly because I've got three workings per metric. Let's say I'm looking at the gross margin. I would do it for 04. I would do it for 05. Then I would talk about the change. Show your workings. This way, you can get the own figure rule if something is partially incorrect. Also, extremely important, when you are expressing a change, do it in relative terms. Express the change in percentage terms, not in percentage points. So if missed deliveries went from 10% missed deliveries to 20% missed deliveries, 10% to 20% is a 100% increase. It's not, don't talk about 10 percentage point increase. The marking team has indicated in the examiner's reports they only give credit when you describe change in relative terms. When you get onto the discussion part, when you are evaluating or assessing performance, you gotta remember, assessing is not describing performance. You're not gonna repeat what your numbers say there. To get the mark, and it's an easy mark, if you make a judgment, evaluating or assessing is showing judgment, is the change a good thing or a bad thing? You gotta say that, okay? It's a positive or a negative change. Then you gotta say because. Use the word because. Say how something happened, why something happened. Link it to some clue in the scenario or link it to another figure that might be related. So you're going to give judgment. You're going to say because. Then you say also, however, and you are developing your idea for potentially a second follow-on mark. That is how you assess and evaluate. If you would like to practice that in great detail, check the link right here. I will take you through in another video how to analyze, evaluate, and assess performance. Remember, there are no marks for grammar, no marks for spelling. So move quickly, avoid the academic approach, avoid wordsmithing, just make your point in simple direct language, keep it moving, hit next. Let's talk about getting easy marks in section B. For me, section B is the most difficult part of the exam. Well, why is that? Let me show you. In section B, you're going to get the scenario with five questions attached to that scenario. I feel there is a big disparity in the difficulty level between the questions. For example, this first question about bottleneck. Oh, look, that's another key word, bottleneck. You know that's throughput accounting, bottleneck. And if we look at this question, we've got two products. We've got three, type of work, three types of workers. So that's potentially six calculations that we've got to do to get this one right. That's a lot of work. Moving on to the next one throughput accounting ratio for two products. That's more than two marks of work. Okay, that's a lot of work to get that done. So I would skip these first two questions. I would keep moving through. I would scan all of the questions and look at this. Question three is theoretical. This will be easier to clear than the previous two. 
In fact, you could burn five, 10 minutes just doing one, just doing the throughput accounting ratio. So my message to you is to check all five of the objective test questions assigned to that scenario. Do the theory ones first, you'll process those and do them quicker, and then go on and do the more difficult numerical ones. That you, you won't get all five of them finished, except that. If you follow the time management approach, if you can get three or four of them done, throw down a guess for the remaining, you're gonna get more than 50% correct in section B. Moving on to our next tip, remote exams. If you are sitting your exam at home, you will not be allowed to use scratch paper. You need to do everything in the scratch pad. And if you have not practiced that, it can be a little bit challenging. So if you are sitting remote exams, my next tip is in the final week or even two weeks, do all of your question practice in the practice platform using that scratch pad for all of your notes. And I have a video on how to use the scratch pad. The link for it is right here if you'd like to learn more about that. My next tips are about dealing with tricky topics. There are tricky topics in PM, but within those tricky topics, you can find easier things to do. For example, variance analysis. Most people I know struggle with this topic. The calculations are tricky, they are difficult. However, when it's examined, both in section A, B, or C, there will be questions on the theoretical aspects of the variances. Now, that is not so bad. If you just separate the numerical part from the theoretical part, can you interpret what each of those numbers means? Well, that'll take you about 45 minutes. If you skip the calculations, go back into your study materials, just what do those numbers tell us? So imagine you're in section C, and they ask you about mix and yield. Can you interpret the mix? The mix variance is telling us about the ratio of the inputs. Did we use a greater or a, a lower percentage of the expensive versus cheaper ingredients? Now the yield variance, that one is telling us, did the inputs yield the expected outputs? Three kilos in, should give us two kilos out. We put in 30 kilos, but we only got out 18. We should get 20, we only got 18. The yield variance is adverse. There's some inefficiency there, waste or spillage. So the interpretation is not too bad if you just separate that from the numerical part. Planning and operational variances. When this comes up, this is about controllability. This is about fair appraisal with KPIs. When this comes up in section C, pretty much every time the net variance, let's say it's adverse, the production manager therefore gets a unfavorable appraisal, but we discover that it's unfair because there were circumstances out of their control the market price of the commodity changed or the customer changed the size of the, 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 the dimensions of their product. So when this comes up, we separate the, the, the net variance into planning and operational components and we use the operational to judge the performance of the production manager. That's what they can control. Planning variance then tells us about the effectiveness of the, the budgeting and the standard setting process in the company. If you get market size or market share variance, you've got to remember this is a drill down into the sales volume variance. It's looking at the number of units budgeted versus actual. It's comp comparing the budgeted contribution to the flexed contribution why is profit different from selling more or fewer units? Well, let's say the sales volume variance is adverse. 
We sold fewer units. We give the sales manager a negative appraisal. He's upset. He says it's not fair. This is similar to planning and operational. Market size measures the demand for the product. Overall, is the market growing or shrinking? Often we'll see that the market size is shrinking, adverse, but the market share might be growing. The sales team did better than expected when we consider the fact that the market size is dropping. My message is make sure you can get the easier interpretation marks. And with the calculations, if you follow that own figure rule in section C, even if you're not sure about something, you can usually get most of the marks if you're following a template and if you've done some practice. You want, if you want more help on variance analysis, check the link right here. I've got questions on variance analysis ready to go. Transfer pricing, another difficult topic. However, when it comes up in section C, it's often following a somewhat standard approach. So if you've practiced the past exam questions in the spreadsheet, you should be able to get more than 50% of the marks. Guys, here's the link to a transfer pricing question debrief if you'd like to check out transfer pricing. My next tip, if you get a tricky question on the learning curve in section A or section B, okay, you need to use exponential math here. It's easier to do that in the spreadsheet than with the calculator. Don't be afraid to jot down the learning rate, the time for unit number one. What is the unit that we're looking for is time. Write down that key information. Jump into section C and borrow a spreadsheet for that. Guys, those are some of my tips for your upcoming PM exam. If you'd like more tips, check out this two-hour question debrief that I did with ACCA. The link is right here. And check out the rest of my videos in my channel. I'll take you through all the exam technique that you need. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. If you found the video helpful, please throw down a like. Guys, this is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming PM exam.